having sung praise to God uh, using Psalm 130, we're now going to pray a prayer of adoration and confession. And we're going to use Psalm 130 as the basis of that prayer. So let's pray together. Almighty God, out of the depths we have cried to you. We cry to you, O God, out of the depths of our sinfulness. And we pray, O God, that you would hear our prayers. We pray to you, for you, O Lord, are the God above the heavens. You are the one who is worthy of all praise and honour and glory. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. You are the God who made the heavens and the earth, all things that we can see and the things that we cannot. Not one thing that exists, exists without you having created it or without you upholding it by the power of your word. You still sustain this universe and hold all things together. And so we praise you, O God, and we pray that you would hear our prayers. We pray that, that you would hear our worship and our worship would be acceptable to you today. Because we know, O oh God, if you were to count iniquities, if you should mark our sins against us, well, not one of us could stand before you. Each one of us has sinned against you even this week. We have sinned against you by breaking your commandments. We've taken your name in vain. We've done that through the things that we have said, but also through the things that we have done. Any time when we have not honoured you as Lord. Any time when we have not honoured Jesus Christ as the Saviour of mankind. We pray for your forgiveness for our sins. And we thank you that with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. Oh God, how we need your mercy. Our souls wait today for your mercy and for your grace. We wait upon your word and we thank you that through the scriptures you have taught us the way of salvation. You have taught us that we are sinners in need of salvation and what we must do in order to be saved. We praise you, O oh God, that you have not left us in our estate of sin and misery, but through your son Jesus, you have provided a way out. You have provided rescue for us. And we praise the Lord Jesus as the redeemer of your elect people. So today we wait. We wait to hear from your word the way of salvation. We hope our prayers rise to you and are acceptable, not because of our righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ in whose name we offer them. We ask, O oh God, for your mercy today. We ask, O oh God, for your redemption. And we pray that through this service of worship, even as, as we conduct it online and, and do these things in our own homes, we pray, O oh God, that through it, that we would hear, understand and believe the gospel of grace. That Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners, of which I am one. We pray, O oh God, that we would receive the abundant salvation which you have provided for us through Jesus. And we ask that you would give us the faith to believe that Jesus Christ is our only comfort in life and in death. Strengthen our faith today. Build us up in that assurance that we have everlasting life through Jesus. Take your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit, bind it to our hearts that we may believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. That he is the Lord of our lives. Indeed, he is the Lord of this whole universe. And we pray, O oh God, that he, would, that he would redeem us from all of our iniquities. That he would save us from all of our sins. And that he would re receive 
all glory and all honour and all praise today. We pray, O oh God, for your sake and for your glory, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as it was, is now and shall be forevermore. Amen. We've prayed a prayer of confession. We've confessed our sin to God in prayer. And so for the month of August, we're going to be using the assurance of pardon found in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. It's great news to know that, that because of Jesus, if we are found in him, if, if we have put our faith and our hope and our trust in him, well, there is no condemnation. Our sin does not condemn us anymore. God looks upon us and he sees the perfection and righteousness of Jesus. There is no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us move then to the second part of our service and to hearing from God's word. And we're going to hear as we read from the Bible. Um, we're in Psalm 5 today. We're just working our way through the Psalms week by week during these summer months. Today we're looking at Psalm 5. So please do pick up your Bible and read along with me. This is God's word. To the chief musician with flutes, a psalm of David. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will, it, I will direct it to you and will look up. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with the tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favour you will surround him as with a shield. Amen. And we thank God for this reading from his truth and we praise him that when we read the Bible, God is pleased to bless us. Well, in the month of July, we looked at Heidelberg Catechism question and answer one for our affirmation of faith. And now in the month of August, we're going to move on to another affirmation of faith. And it's going to be the Apostles' Creed. And we'll be working through this uh, week by week with the, the boys and girls in the children's addresses. But the Apostles' Creed is an ancient creed of the Christian faith. And I think it might be good if you have a copy in front of you, even if you're able to pause this video and get the copy from the order of service. It might be good that you say this along with me. Whenever I was in Railway Street, uh, before we, we took the Lord's Supper together, 
uh, the minister would ask us, Christian, what do you believe? And we would say the Apostles' Creed together. It's a good thing for us to do that and, and I think it would be helpful if we were even able to do it uh, with these videos online. So let me ask you, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Hello, boys and girls. Uh, I want to let you into a wee secret about my recording today. Um, not always, but uh, over the last uh, few weeks anyway, I've been doing the children's address, this part of the service, after I've finished all of the other recording. Uh, so it's, you know, it's just nice to get the tie off and to sit here. Remember my, my comfortable chair, my, my favourite chair in the, in the house. Uh, it's just nice to sit here and relax. It's also really nice to get maybe a cup of coffee and a bun. So uh, coffee, bun, it's really good to, to have these things uh, after the service. Just to have a bun and just relax and enjoy my cup of coffee and my comfortable chair. Preaching takes a lot of work out of you, you know, but... It would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be nice to be able to just say coffee and the coffee appears in your hand. Of course, that's just a trick of the of the camera. I, I'm not really able to do that. I'm not really able to just say coffee and the coffee appears in your hand. What is it that you would like to just, if you could just say the words and it would appear in front of you, what would you say? You can maybe let me know about that. We're going to work through the, the uh, Apostles' Creed over the month of August. And the first line of the Apostles' Creed says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. The word creed actually comes from the word credo, which means I believe. And so that's why it's called a creed. It's, it's about what we believe. And the first thing it says is that we believe in God and that he's our father, that he's almighty and that he is the maker of heaven and earth. God made all things. And God doesn't make things the way you or I make things. You know, if I was going to make a bun, although I would need flour and I would need sugar and I would need eggs and, and I would mix them together and I would need an oven, I would need heat in the oven and I would need a smarty to put on top which is made of chocolate and sugar and lots of other things. I would need to get all the ingredients together, I would need to bring them all together and I would need to do the right things with them to make a bun. But I wouldn't be able to make the flour. In fact, we have to think that God made the flour. God made the grain grow, which gives us the flour. God makes the rain to fall on the grain. He, he makes the sun to shine on the grain. God made all things. But in the beginning, back in the, at the start of Genesis, it was by speaking that God made. You'll remember God said, let there be light. And there was light. God made things by speaking them. It would be amazing for me just to say coffee. And the coffee appears in my hand. But it doesn't work like that, does it? We have to go and we, we have to make it. God, when he created the heavens and the earth, well, he just spoke and the things existed. And something really amazing about the way that God existed is he didn't get all of the ingredients together and then make the thing. God made them out of 
nothing. The fancy term for that is ex nihilo, ex nihilo, out of nothing. God made all things out of nothing. That's why we say that he's the maker of heaven and earth. I believe that he's the maker of heaven and earth. Someone who can do that, well, they are almighty. So I believe that God is almighty. But isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that we also say, I believe that he is father. He's our father. It's amazing to call God father. And the grown-ups in our sermon, we're going to think about that a little bit. But we call God Father because Jesus has brought us into God's family through his death on the cross. God is the maker of all things. He makes in an almighty way by speaking out his word. And this maker who made all things, this creator God, well, we believe that he is our Father through Jesus. And so we come to him in prayer and we can talk to him. We read our Bibles and he talks to us. It's amazing to be able to speak to our Father, who is almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Maybe you can send me and let me know what it is. Maybe you would say hamburger and you'd have a hamburger in front of you uh, right now. What is it you would want uh, to be able to just speak into creation? We can't do that, can we? Only God can do that. He is almighty and he's our father. Well, before we come to the sermon, we're going to stand and sing once again. We're going to sing this great uh, Christian hymn before the throne of God above. So let's stand on our feet and sing out.